my name is Rob Legends. I'm working for uh, for a Dutch uh, financial institute, uh, also called Bank. So, um, um, and I'm uh, I'm a platform engineer like uh, like a lot of people, um, mostly related to doing things on on the platform of the databases, which means uh, I do deliver uh, VMs on on premise. Uh, we have about 1,800 of them. Uh, and for that, we always looking for some stuff which can be helpful for us. Uh, in the past, uh, we we used a tool there uh, called uh, PowerShell Universal. We still use it to do some uh, API creation of uh, of uh, PowerShell scripts we have. But uh, I think last year, when I was uh, just reading around, um, I found a, a tool created by Microsoft dropped us uh, as open source and um, it's called Data API Builder um, and it, it gets used quite uh, quite more and more. Um, so that's why I created this, uh, this session in the, the beginning of the, uh, I think halfway summer, uh, I started with the session and like I said already, it's evolving every time. So uh, you can see the same session, uh, at least the same text uh, in, in uh, some of the more uh, uh, in, in more of these uh, uh, events, but I think the content will be different every time because I'm evolving in, in what I'm doing. I'm trying to get to a certain end state, which I have in my mind, uh, and that can be helpful for uh, for more and more people. So what I'm going to show you today is um, we all know that uh, that uh, um, we need to sometimes grant people access to our data in the database, but we don't want to make that very um, complicated on one side, but we should remain uh, secure on the other side. So we're a bit in a, in a split brain there. Um, so yeah, looking at this session, uh, I tried to go through, um, let me see where's my mouse, okay, it's there. I uh, I don't want to go uh, to the idea of uh, building, uh, building something which is, uh, uh, showing you how you can access data, which is on-premise, on but also showing it how it's on, uh, uh, how you can connect to an Azure database and Azure SQL uh, on one side, um, but that can be uh, a lot more there. So uh, what is driving your IDs? Well, uh, I think I should have rephrased that. What's driving my IDs? Well, if I'm thinking about uh, um, setting up an, an API driven uh, application um, what I want to do uh, want to have it it must be secure on one side um, of course like I said already um, we should have a full DevOps experience so we should be able to run all the things ourselves um, it should be integrated in in any of the um, yeah, Visual Studio uh, DevOps or uh, in this case a github uh, repositories which we can have and um, because uh, the end state of me is something like uh, I want to publish it in my website and my website is built on, on Hugo. Um, so I want this uh, be able to be uh, used in, in static web applications like Hugo Elevante. Uh, and I think about 70 other uh, versions there. Oh, uh, okay, that's that's it. So um, if you want to go for the great DevOps experience, because uh, I think we all get in the, in the same directions, we should get T-shaped and I don't know what kind of buzzwords they all uh, got. I saw last week also somebody mentioning uh, M-shaped uh, and also uh, peer-shaped, uh, but that's depending on how people look at it. Um, if you want to go in the, in the great uh, uh, experience, you should be able that, uh, that uh, you should be able to create pipelines which do the publication of your code to the um, and to, to your repository and that repository takes uh, takes action when something has changed and publish it to the uh, correct place and the correct place should be something which goes from from your local uh, desktop laptop whatever to uh, maybe a staging site uh, uh, but probably uh, for most of us it will not be uh, if it's a if it's a hobby project, let's call it that way, it will go from your local branch to um, to the production branch. That all should be possible within uh, the pipeline in the end. So, um, 
if you look at, at, at pipelines, uh, like I said, you should have local uh, local development, staging, UAT, production, all these areas you should be able to cover. If you look at the, the professionality of the tools, uh, we know we have a lot of tools. Um, I'm thinking in this case about the Data API Builder, which is the component from Microsoft delivered as open source, but available in, uh, in a lot of th uh, things. You can download it as a NuGet package. It's part of your Visual Studio, uh, at least a professional edition, but it's also part of a Static Web App. So Static Web App is another one, uh, GitHub is another one, um, and we do have uh, uh, Visual Code, or we do need something like Visual Code or Visual Studio or any text editor, which is which you are familiar with, to be able to uh, to code this stuff. Um, I like to use Visual Code because that integrates with uh, the GitHub repository is quite easy, and you can do the pull request from there and that kind of stuff. So that's what I uh, usually use for this. Um, yeah, if you, if you look at the, the good coding experience for for us as, as a hobby project, um, less is better. Uh, you should be able to use command line tools and should be it should be easy uh, easy to connect. Well, if you look at Visual Code from that perspective, um, you have a command line option to, to do checks to validate things. Um, less is better. Uh, I will show you something there uh, in uh, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, also, that's also about command line tools and uh, easy to connect. Yeah, well, if you have your Visual Studio uh, code up and running, you can connect to your database. You can connect to uh, any of the environments you need. Um, if you take the action on, on security, uh, because uh, oh, I see something uh, I need to change for the next uh, presentation, but okay. Um, if you look at the security aspects of, of using APIs, you want to uh, limit the access to, uh, uh, you want to limit the access as much as possible. So you don't want to give any access uh, to the full database, but even to the tables itself. Um, and you should only give access to store procedures or views. Um, store procedures is, is uh, when you do need to edit uh, your your uh, data uh, and views. Uh, I would always use views for uh, showing data which is only required in that certain area. Um, controlled access. If you look at um, how you can get access to your database. Uh, we have lots of lots of options here, also in the cloud. Um, we can use uh, yeah, the, the SQL logins. Uh, we can use uh, Windows logins when you're talking uh, uh, in, a, in a domain situation, so on-premise. But you also have that option in the cloud. So you can also use uh, Active, uh, uh, Active Directory there, AAD, or uh, recently renamed to Entra ID. And for that, uh, you need to set up authenticated access. And for getting this stuff uh, authenticated, uh, that's the, the things I'm, I'm doing currently. I'm trying to integrate the stuff with uh, Entra ID, so creating an, app an application from the API, which has been published, so that you can uh, log in with an uh, yeah as, as your identity uh, to the to the database, and you are able to do things. Um, the good thing about uh, data API builder is also that you can uh, that it uh, for the GWT access, which is the uh, uh, Entra or uh, uh, Active Directory identities, uh, it will get generate uh, builder tokens, and those tokens can be used to access uh, the data in the end. Um, one. Um, why do you want to do this uh, API driven? Um, well, um, the thing is that uh, APIs are loosely coupled, which means if you deliver an API, in fact, any application can connect to it. Uh, as long as you can do uh, HTTP re uh, request uh, to, to your API server or whatever. One of these examples is um, in the, in the company, we're using uh, a portal from uh, from a big uh, hyper uh, hypervisor deliverer, and 
VMware in this case, and they deliver us something like VRA and VRO and stuff, and there are APIs running on it. Um, that interface on top of there is built on um, JavaScript-like stuff. Uh, they want to replace that uh, by another portal, but that would mean um, if, if we would have followed what they recommended at that time, it would mean we would we do need to recreate all the uh, scripts we had. So that's why we had our own API server in between. And now it means only that they need to do some reconfiguration on their side when they are going to move it. And we don't need to do anything. Our scripts are not changing. So it makes you independent. Uh, and also security can be uh, added there to make sure that, uh, for example, we know that that portal can connect to, uh, to our API server. But also we can grant certain teams access to our APIs to do things. So then they are not using the, the portal from uh, from that ordering portal, but they're using our portal, our API, just to access the data. And the good thing is that uh, you can control APIs by pipelines uh, and the scripts are there. Uh, you can change them uh, and you can publish it. So, so if you're looking at this, what do you need for uh, for a pipeline? Uh, the first steps, of course, is that uh, you need to have your local computer, and you should have uh, a GitHub uh, account. Well, a GitHub account is something you can get for free. That's quite easy. Um, next to that, you should have access to uh, to your uh, Azure uh, Azure uh, environment. So your your tenant, let's call it that way. In the tenant, uh, you should create a resource group. And in the tenant, you can create your static web app and you can create a SQL server with a database on top of it. Uh, one of the next things what is recommended is that you open up your database uh, for, your local, for your local IP address. So the IP address you're working from home. Sometimes that can be a bit uh, uh, um, tedious because not everyone in the world has uh, always the same IP address. That changes sometimes. So um, it means that from day A, uh, from day one till day two, it can be that uh, on day one you can access your database, on day two it's not. So it's a, it's a bit uh, a problem to access that. Um, this is somehow the, the minimum uh, thing what you need because in the static web app you have a configuration page for database access and that means and that spot you can build up the connection between your static web app and uh, in this case your sql server the sql server you can uh, you, you can add any kind of security like i said you can use the entry ids and you can also use a local managed id for local accounting in the sql server um, is this secure? Well, not not really. Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, um, you see that that uh, the SQL Server you can access it using port 14, uh, 1433. That means that this red arrow in here, and that is something you want to uh, you want to prevent. So, if you want to make it secure, um, you should set up a managed uh, managed user managed identity. Uh, and run your static web app under that account and, and run it also on the SQL server to get that access. Uh, next steps would be that you uh, create an enterprise application from your uh, from your API uh, and uh, connect users and roles to it. And from that users and roles, you can get back the, uh, uh, the barrel token, which you can use later in, in the connection uh, between those those things. And yeah, the, the pyramid is there because uh, lots of this stuff is in fact uh, Entra ID related or Azure Active Directory related. Um, if you want to, to do something else after this, so some more recommendations, I would recommend to add, um, add log analytics uh, in, in the separate resource group and putting some uh, Sentinel stuff uh, and also uh, Defender for SQL on, on the database, uh, create some uh, rules in the static web app to write events to the, the log analytics workspace so that you can see 
uh, who's logging in, uh, what's done, and how you can uh, help your uh, consumers in the end to get better. This is about the global setup, how the pipeline could look in the end. So you could go from local to remote, uh, and local means you can uh, you should run a SQL if you can run a SQL server there or any local database, uh, but you can also connect straight to the to the SQL for your development purpose. Um, yeah, to, to get locally started, you need an ID. Well, I, I had the ID to uh, to make my uh, uh, to make my website uh, a bit more uh, interactive than the static uh, Hugo pages. Um, I don't want to go into WordPress or whatever because that's bringing a lot of overhead and a lot of extra costs, and it's not fast. Um, so what do you need? Uh, furthermore, uh, you need PowerShell 6, 7, uh, and later also 8 will be there. You need a GitHub account, like I said already. You need have Azure Access, a local uh, database, and you need to install a data API builder on your local machine. And of course, uh, Visual Studio, brackets, code, close. So, um, There are some commands uh, which I will show now. Uh, what you can do to uh, make sure that you can uh, that you can start using uh, the, the, the data API builder. I will bring my um, PowerShell to here, so I'm, I'm having terminal running here. Terminal is having uh, yeah, it's just just. A nice tool. Is this all uh, clear, by the way? Yeah, OK. Um, so first action, if you have uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, <laughs> um, First action would be uh, you need to install um, the data API builder. There's a quite easy uh, method for that. You can do build that to install uh, this command, Microsoft Data API Builder. If you do it like this, um, I, I get the message that it is installed already, but it's a starting point of, of what you uh, what you can do. If you have done this. Um, I'll hang on, I'll need to copy a little bit. Where's my okay? I'll try to type that, it's not, not that difficult. Um, next thing is that you need to create a, a, a DAB, DAB config.json file. You do that in, in the place where you want to, uh, to have your project. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, to my uh, to folder where I do have the resources there, uh, the folder structure. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm creating a blah, CD blah, and I will run DAB init dash database MSSQL SQL uh, and then you need to enter your connection string oh, sorry I hope I do have that somewhere else. Uh, I'll, I'll pick it from uh, from the code because I'm not going to type that. Uh, 
that should be it, I think. Host mode development. Okay, that's something we need to add then. Okay, well, option database is unknown. Well, this should be the command. Let's see why it's not server database. Double hyphen, I think it is wrong. Sorry? Yeah, there's a double, you, you get a single hyphen. You got a, you need a double hyphen on it, I think. Can I, is that, I think I saw on the host mode. Oh, host mode. yeah, indeed, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So double hyphens in there. It's still not good. Uh, database type is missing. Oh, yeah, I made a typo there. Uh, it's database dash type. So this, this would generate uh, the JSON file. There you go. And it says, okay, it's uh, it's created and um, because it doesn't exist. So if I'm looking now in, in this folder, I will see the JSON, uh, the depth comfort JSON. In fact, this is the starting point of, of what you do. Um, we can we can start uh, DAP in here, uh, but I think I need to close another one first. Yep. So. And from here, you will see, okay, it connects and there is nothing else what, what I can show you at the moment because it's just simple things, nothing else. So what I will do, I will uh, add some uh, some stuff there. But the good thing is that you can do that without, um, without any line of programming. So if I do want to add uh, um, Add something like in here. Uh, I'm going to add some some sales data, uh, which, which I do have. Uh, I agreed that in the past. So what I'm doing here is, uh, if you look at this, you will see that uh, add get sales data. That this will add a part of this is the name of the API. You will go through the um, store procedure sales data. It's the as you can see this store procedure, and this is the name of the store procedure. Um, we can select some uh, some parameters and there's permission uh, execute and in this case I have uh, I haven't had any security but that's for for this demo now it's not not really needed and um, so if I press enter here you will see okay it's added and if you do the type uh, you will see that uh, but in here you have to connect string of the file. Runtime, it's using uh, development. Um, it's configures standard for static web apps, which means in fact nothing. And you have the uh, entities, and that's the one I created here. That's the get sales data uh, sub procedure and the execution there. Um, this is the way how you add uh, sub procedures, but you can also add views in here, and you can also add. Um, uh, table data here. So if you do want to give access to a table, you can do it like this. You can add some method here that post uh, and get, um, but that, that's uh, the things. Um, it, it is, like I said, uh, you, you can, uh, uh, it, this is supported on uh, on a lot of databases, local, uh, local SQL, but also Cosmos, uh, Azure SQL, MySQL, Progress SQL. And I suspect that uh, there will follow a few more in the, in the next few months. Um, maybe some of the new stuff which is, is released, uh, uh, is, is going to be released in the next few weeks that will be added also. Um, so yeah, what else? Coffee, of course, but okay. And um, how could we verify that it's working? Well, that, that's a good thing. Um, In here, uh, I will go back to uh, to the other one, uh, which do I have active here? Uh, so 
one, but that's okay. Yeah, it's a local one, so we can uh, we can. Uh, well, sorry, we can play around here. I will uh, have this one. So, um, what you see in here, by the way, this is when you when you start the uh, the the uh, data API builder. It will go through, uh, it will find out the config and it will go through all the things you have created, if they are OK or not. So it will report back if you made a mistake somewhere. Um, and I think I have lots of that uh, above here, but uh, because I was finding out some stuff this morning. Um, and this is uh, this is a bit more how it's how it's uh, uh, set up. So um, let's bring in this uh, this screen. Uh, well, uh, this one, uh, Visual Studio. This one, yeah. This is how it how it looks in, in Visual Studio. Um, I have created uh, uh, a simple test case here. Um, which, which is uh, well, uh, well, maybe, maybe let's start with something else first. It sounds a bit strange, but um, the cool thing is um, this stuff uh, is is working on port 501. Uh, that that's the call you make from from your code, and so it's going to localhost 501. Um, on that host, you have an you have the, the API, for example, so you can type in API and you get APIs in here. And you can also uh, just call uh, GraphQL because it, it's supporting GraphQL and you get the banana cake stuff. So in here you can create a, a query which uh, the uh, which the output is has been generated here. Also, uh, you have Swagger. That's always an, a nice tool to look at when you when you're doing APIs that you know okay which fields are used, why they are used, and how could it be that they are used. And this stuff is now connected to uh, to uh, to my um, to my local database, so my uh, my VM which is running in uh, in the other screen. Um, but that's uh, that that's okay. Um, if you do the get sales data, for example, here uh, you can do that already, and you can say okay, try out, execute. And you you will see that uh, that we have a, a turnover figures from uh, three of the of the bike stores. Um, but um, like I said, I'm uh, I'm going to add some stuff in here so that we can at least see something more there. Um, and for that, I need this screen. So what I'm going to do, um, I know I I could have made uh, of course. Uh, First thing, what what we should do, uh, I'm like to, to show you at least, so it's quite easy. I'm going to add a store uh, in here. So I'm going to uh, add the PP Bikes uh, uh, Web Store UK, and it's on the Abbey Road in in Manchester. I'm not familiar with any of that stuff, by the way. I'm from the Netherlands, so I know Abbey Road and I know the city of Manchester because Sequel Bits was there a few years ago, which I really like, by the way. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to add that using uh, using the sales store endpoint which I created. Um, I can show you by the way the sales store. It's it's in here. Uh, and if you go to the sales store, and to the sales customer, sales items, sales staff, sales orders, sales lines, order book, sales data, and the sales store is probably somewhere more on top. Production products, sales customers, sales items, sales staff, sales orders, sales, sales source. There it is. So this this endpoint that we are going to use, and I'm going to put this data in. Next to that, uh, for the shop, I do need uh, to have a, a sales guy, uh, and I found uh, Justin uh, prepared to uh, to switch jobs, and uh, so he's going to sell bikes. Um, so I'm uh, adding that one and I'm adding it to uh, to the um, shop we created above. 
And uh, I will end up with uh, some similar things like, okay, I'm going to um, to do the web request and uh, I'm looking at, at the year 20, 2023, but I can leave that out also. Um, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to call it from, from the, uh, yeah, from Visual Studio. Oh, great. Now I see him. Uh, hang on. Oh. Yeah. Um, this is also why I wrote a blog, a blog a few months ago about the camel casing, Pascal casing, etc. This stuff is case sensitive. Um, it's not in, so I can probably just recall it now. Still a mistake here. Content unexpected fields in the country. Sometimes this is a bit annoying. Okay, this is the next unique key. Uh, I think I uh, I added some some guys already. Um, if you, uh, what we can do is we can bring up this uh, this screen, and this is the this is the place. Uh, <laughs> you are the offending key you need, uh, Justin. <laughs> Uh, and like you see, I already added uh, two uh, two shops in here, so probably that's that's one of the reasons. And uh, in the staff, that should uh, there is Justin also, and he's part of store 111. So and that's the one which is there. So what I can do is, um, of course, I can uh, delete from. Start where ID equals and then I have oh no that should be staff ID of course. And on the other screen, we had these ones. Um, This means that we should be able now to call this one correct. And indeed, we'll see uh, both in turnover and yeah, there's, there's more content there. So this, this means um, you can use PowerShell to validate your input locally, but also to do that uh, in, in a remote thing. Um, to show that, that you in fact can do the same uh, and that, that some stuff will change, I will uh, remove this one, throw this away, throw it better way, and this is for the other screen. For now, I'm going to cancel this one. As you can see, I do have multiple uh, uh, DAP configs here. So I'm going to uh,
Do the same, but then on Azure. And I'm going to do uh, there. We go. So this one's also up and running now, and it's connected to uh, to my database in the cloud. Um, I will bring back uh, this screen. Oh, hang on. And I will show you that uh, we still have some, some stuff there. Uh, you asked me, by the way, why 113? That's the one for uh, for Google websites. Now I'm connected to the to one in, uh, in the cloud. Uh, I do have less. Uh, I do have almost the same uh, uh, endpoints there. Um, only if you look at the stores, for example, those are less. Uh, if you look at, not only have uh, three stores in it. I think one, two, three. Um, you see a state in here and the county with low capitals and that is important because I do need to do that from from here also. If I'm looking at this, there is a, there should be a state in it. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's not uh, reality, but um, I'm, I'm going to uh, move uh, uh, a little bit over, but that's just because of um, so I'm still using the same script um, and I'm using the same content uh, as you might see in, in my Azure Explorer. Come on. In the source, there is uh, there is no UK store there. So we will add one uh, and we will do and we make just in the same there. So. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're good to go. Here we go, and you see no error message, which means that the stuff is added, and also that um, our salesman. is also uh, one of us. Um, so that, that shows that you can all uh, verify the stuff locally um, with the tools you have, like, like Swagger and so on. Uh, it's really helpful uh, to continue this, this stuff. Um, there are also other tools which, which are really uh, awesome uh, to use. Uh, and that is when you are, uh, for example, uh, Insomnia, which is a tool where you can easily look and, and create nice uh, GraphQL queries and, and do stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think this, this is already what I showed using the API in the real world. Uh, I changed the connection to the cloud database. I did that by swapping uh, the configuration and uh, uh, the DAP, DAP configuration. Um, this is one way of doing it. The other way is that you, you can use environments. So you can set up an environment and say, okay, this is the environment uh, for uh, for local, uh, for testing, and uh, something like that. So and change the second one for prod if you want. Um, if you're using static web app, uh, you need to create a, um, a configuration file on a separate space, on a separate, separate place. Um, I showed you that that you can use the same PowerShell, 
uh, in this case, I only need it added one row because that's in, in one table and not in the other one. Uh, it is some code I need to fix in, in the in the bike store uh, examples which were created by someone. Um, what's really important in this is that uh, that you look at how you set up your um, uh, your repository. Uh, I found out, uh, I think a week ago, that uh, hey, it's not easy. Uh, I need to uh, I need to switch from uh, from having only a website to also having the source code for the API, uh, for the DAP API, and maybe uh, in the near future also another API. So what I'm what I did there is uh, I set up uh, I restructured the, the the structure to have a having a docs where you can put your own remarks in. You having a build where you can uh, yeah normally you would put your Azure DevOps build pipeline stuff in in such a repository and uh, you have a source folder. And the source folder is one where you which contains all the data about where you should store uh, your artifacts. In fact, uh, so uh, the API uh, connection strings, the other code for it, the DAP configuration uh, and the web configuration. And uh, of course, you can make uh, you can make these folders also uh, um, changed based on um, where you are. So in, in the DAP folder, you can say, okay, I want to create a, a, a production branch and I want to create a, a production site and and, uh, and, a, and a development uh, area as being subfolders where you can put in different uh, configuration files. And uh, a test folder is, is really helpful. Um, I use that, for example, to store that, that the kind of uh, PowerShell files to, to test if if my uh, connection is is working, uh, is is checked and checkable. Um, if you have done this and you have set up your static web app, you will get uh, the GitHub workflow for free. Um, that's done because the static web app is using that, and that static web app uh, for that that workflow is having some path in it. Um, the paths in, in that uh, are wrong uh, because they, uh, at least initially, you, you need to uh, figure out how they should look like. I can show you how they are in, in my case for, for this kind of stuff. Um, um, you also get a, a Visual Studio Code uh, folder uh, and that contains the configuration for uh, the Visual Studio Code you have. Um, I will show you how my uh, thing is working. My, uh, my other one. So this is my. And then I don't save. If you look at my files, and um, you will see that that um, uh, is this the correct one? No, this is the wrong one. I need to pick the other one. And this is the one. Mm -hmm. Where's my? Uh, no, it's not. This is not the right one. It should, it should have the other one. So the, this one in here. Like, hmm? am I doing something wrong? Let me check this. Hmm. I'll pick it there. Uh, I'll do it another way. Open folder. And then we'll go to this one. In the end, you will see that there is that structure about uh, the build, the docs, uh, and uh, the source. And this is how I'm, I'm using it at the moment. If you look at the, the source, I do have the API, I have the WSWA connection, uh, and, and the web content, of course, because it's, it's a combination of stuff. If you look at the uh, configuration of the uh, 
of the flow. Um, part of this is done automatically by um, by uh, Azure DevOps already. Uh, and where it is different uh, in this case is because we have uh, this structure in here, which publishes stuff to uh, or takes the stuff from certain locations and pushes to the places where uh, Azure does want to have it. Um, this is the whole job and it runs automatically when you push something to your main branch. So uh, I normally do have some, some branches here, uh, like updates or something like that, which I do use to, uh, to create uh, uh, additional content before I publish it, for example. Um, if we go back to uh, this, I think one of the most important parts is, of course, um, useful links because uh, there are some stuff what what uh, you know what's quite useful to to know uh, there is a learning path on on using the uh, using dap uh, i think at the moment there are free applications which are built with dap on the microsoft website uh, which are used that's a kind of a to-do list and there's two other ones um in the beginning when i was started there was only one so they the updating the stuff also nice to know is that uh, parts of the um, SQL Bits website are also built with uh, uh, DAP in it. And it's really a really nice and good good product uh, to, to see how it works. Um, the combination with the static web app is, is quite, uh, quite good. Um, for being able to do it using a static web app with uh, the day uh, with DAP, you have to um, you have to upgrade from the free to the uh, to, to a paid subscription. Um, but also useful, like I said already, uh, Insomnia of Insomnia for testing their GraphQL. Uh, Visual Studio has several plugins for this, for Hugo, for uh, PowerShell, but also for uh, for Postman, for the also a tool where you can uh, create uh, requests to your API. Uh, also useful is, is the banana cake integration. Um, that's that's the blue tool we saw uh, where you can create uh, GraphQL queries. Uh, Swagger is useful, and um, I find it quite uh, useful to have a terminal, uh, the, the yeah, a terminal running for the various versions of PowerShell because. Um, that runs in PowerShell six. I think, and if you want to have Hugo, it runs in seven. So you have various versions where you do need to run that uh, that thing. But it, the good thing is also that it all runs in the same same windows. Um, as you can see, um, it's using port 5001. Um, if you want to change that, that is possible. Uh, uh, behind the, the data API builder, there is the tool called Castrel as, as the web, uh, web version. And that's um, yeah. You can con configure that by by changing some values there. Um, yeah. Yeah, like uh, like you said, Justin, uh, Visual Studio uh, Code is really an awesome tool. Same as as uh, data for Azure Data Studio. It's it's the same tool. In fact. It has integrations with all, all the stuff also. Uh, you can connect uh, from Visual Studio to your database also, and also to any other database like uh, which are mentioned in, in this one. So uh, uh, I think uh, these these ones uh, are, are the ones which are really, uh, really important for all of us. Uh, it's uh, the Cosmos DB, uh, Azure SQL, MySQL, PostgreSQL. The, comp uh, the information on the website for Microsoft is quite good and quite complete. So um, the only thing, yeah, they, they just switched. Uh, I noticed last week they just switched from uh, Azure Active Directory to uh, to the product called Entra ID, and that has also brought some changes in the interface. Uh, but like I said, I uh, I did already find out what what's there, so I blocked about it. <laughs> 